Hi everybody, Chief Meteorologist Chris Justice here with you back at it, giving you an update on this January pattern that we have to watch across the southern United States. We've got a couple of different systems already coming in. Look at the winter storm warnings, winter storm watches in the Midwest, up through the Western North Carolina mountains, up through the Appalachian mountains with serious cold on the way to the entire United States. It's about to get as cold as far south as the Caribbean islands. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing to this channel right now. Like this video, give it a subscribe, and we'll keep you updated on all kind of weather. And turn on those notifications because there is a lot going on here. And I want to let you know that it's about to get cold for everyone. And anytime it gets cold or colder than normal at the coldest part of winter, you have to stay dialed in and pay attention to what's going on. So let's show you the developments in the models over the past couple of days here. So here we are going into this weekend. The good news I can tell you is that the ice threat outside of of the mountains has gone down for Sunday night Monday so many were wondering will we even start school well some of the models were hinting last week that no you would not start school on time that it could be a mess just about anywhere you go and right now it looks like that's only going to be confined to Western North Carolina but it's going to be a cold rain for all of us Sunday night Monday on the eastern facing slopes of the mountains here up through West Virginia into Virginia oh back through Kentucky that is a mess I mean winter storm warnings and watches already in place for this system comes through as a cold rain but it's this system that brings in the cold cold air for us next week where highs are going to be in the 30s for several days lows in the teens and it just stays cold but what about precipitation well the GFS has kind of gone more in line with the European at keeping us mainly dry and cold however it shows another system in that late next week next weekend time frame where we have to pay attention to it some sleet and freezing rain for atlanta greenville spartanburg an ice event showing up here on the gfs model up through charlotte this would be friday night into saturday of this upcoming week there'd be snow in tennessee western north carolina mountains up through virginia and that would sit there sometime friday night saturday before it moves out in time for sunday and we'd start to thaw things back out but that would be Kind of a nasty situation for us. How about snow totals on that GFS? Well, as you saw, it was a lot of pink and orange showing up for the I-85 corridor, so the snow would mainly be confined to the mountains, and it would be around 5 to 10 inches from, uh, say, elevations above 3,000 feet. So Asheville northbound would get quite a bit of snow out of this, whereas ice would be a bigger problem here. Going into this upcoming Friday night, this would be Friday the 10th into the 11th, this is showing a swath of about a quarter of an inch of ice across the I-85 corridor. So here we go again, another day in a row of the past probably six, seven days that we've had some sort of winter weather showing up on our models here for late this weekend of the weekend, of which we know there's a system, we know there's going to be something trying to come our way, is it snow, is it ice, or is it just really, really darn cold? That's yet to be ironed out. Let's show you our, G our, our European model, I should say. Let's scrub through that real quick. It, too, shows minimal ice threats outside of the eastern-facing slopes of the mountains here as we go into this Sunday night, Monday. Remember, this is, the, this is the system that comes through and opens the door for cold air. It rolls through, gets some pretty good northwest flow snow for folks in the mountains. Behind this system, boy, it gets cold. Below zero wind chills, a common. Near zero temperatures uh, in, in high elevations, 3,500 feet up through Beach Mountain, Sugar Mountain, Mount Mitchell. Oh, man, so, 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 so cold. Uh, here we go into the middle of the week, European late week. Er, it does not show anything but a little southern scraper right here. That's all the European develops. It shows cold air but so cold, but so dry in a suppressed atmosphere that the European would say, hey, you had your chance. Here's some rain for you mid-month. You snow lovers are not loving that, right? If it's going to be cold, might as well get a snow out of it. That would be extremely surprising to make it out of that whole pattern there without an ounce of snow. What does the Canadian model say? It, too, has been showing something in between. It, too, shows minimal ice threats, we can confidently say now that we're closer. Remember I told you folks, uh, when we're four or five days out, we can tell you with more certainty on is it trending up or trending down. Now that we're three, four days out from this thing, we're, we're pretty locked in on the locations of the wintry weather. So we know what we know when we know it. So now that we're three, four days out, confidently saying eastern facing slopes of the mountains will have an icy mess. The rest of us, just a cold rain. Now that opens the door. Here we are at Tuesday 
We're just wide open with Canadian air knocking on the door area wide across the southeast. Then comes some cold air. What does the Canadian model say? Okay, you got a big dip in the jet stream. This is our biggest batch of cold air settling in. That 540 line's way down here. It's cold down in the Bahamas. It's cold down in the Keys. I mean, just, just, ah, nobody likes this kind of cold, right? Um, that system dives in, does not phase. So what's happening here is this system up here is too progressive. What it does is it smushes or suppresses the southern stream system instead of kind of allowing it to scoop it up, it suppresses it. So it's kind of being a bully. It's saying, hey, I'm coming through. I'm stronger. I'm going to push you down to the Keys where it's going to be a cold rain here for Central Florida, 50s, 40s. Ugh. Ah, no good, no good, right? So that would that would be similar to the European model. Canadian model says, hey, had your chance, snooze, you lose. Uh, gets things a little interesting here on the 13th, but that's out in la-la land. So European model along with the Canadian model show only mountain snow right now. Uh, it shows it getting really cold for all of us, freezing rain outside of the mountains. There's not much, but this could be quite an ice event. As much as one inch of ice for boom, Beach Mountain, Sugar Mountain, up through Snowshoe. This could be a pretty bad ice storm here going into the uh, late part of next week. How about how cold it gets? Well, let's talk about that because if we have the cold air in place and something does decide to get frosty with us, we'll be able to identify it. Here we are Sunday morning waking up to 19 at Beach and Sugar Mountain, 25 Asheville, 34 in Greenville. And boom, here we go with the cold air. The big wave comes through. And early this week, look at that, Tuesday morning, many well below zero here toward the Midwest, um, teens and 20s across the Western Carolinas. And as we go into the second half of the week, that's when that bigger batch of cold air stretches in. Thursday morning looks to be the peak of it. Nine and boom, 17 in Asheville, 27 in Greenville, well below zero back this way. That swoops in here. And as we go into Friday morning, Ah, just oh so cold. 20s for lows, upper 30s for highs. That's really about all we manage into next weekend where it just stays cold. 20s for high lows, 30s to 40s for highs across the southeast, a pretty common theme. So are we running out of time for snow? Yes and no. Uh, we've got a window. I mean, folks, the pattern could not be more supportive of snow if we could just get the moisture to come in. Now through, say, the 12th to 13th, that's where this line is below zero. That is a, a blocking pattern type setup where the North Atlantic Oscillation, as we track, um, is in a pattern that would allow the cold air just to stick around. That's with us right now through about the 12th, 13th. Not to say that it's you know going incredibly positive. No, it just kind of gets back closer to a more mundane jet stream pattern where blocking is possible but it'd be a short stint of some colder air being blocked not this big dip here where we get a prolonged period of cold air so basically saying the door is wide open between now and the 12th 13th here the the door gets left in, open in a lot here you're yelling at your kids to close the door here it's like okay common common opening the door to your house and you get in and out does that make sense all right for snow lovers who love probability and and, and statistics uh, statistics always uh, hurt my brain, but here we are. Um, this is the average of all of my European models, the, the chance of seeing one inch of snow or more. It's a guarantee here toward the high country, north of Asheville, uh, through this first system. How about this second system? Does it bring in anything? Well, the European says out of all of its models, it's got a 10 to 20% chance of snow in the upstate area up through Charlotte. So it's not saying there, there's no chance. It's just saying about a 10 to 20% chance of that during that time frame. How about the GFS model? Same, same look, guaranteed to get an inch of snow or more north of Asheville. Hendersonville to Asheville sitting at that yellow color, so about 50 to 60% chance. Anywhere south of the North Carolina state line, we're sitting in that purple color, which is about a 10 to 20% chance. So the chances are there. I mean, it's really cold. It's just the models aren't really buying in on there being moisture to sync up with it at this point. Just so you know how long we have. All right, so this is the 8 to 14 day outlook. This gets us through January 16th, below normal temperatures expected. I've got one more outlook that gets us just a little bit deeper. This would go through January 24th. Still cold across the southeast, just not as cool or as, as just potent as the middle of the month. So yeah, we'll still get some cold blasts. Could there be a snow that kind of squeaks in here? Absolutely. But 
folks, when you got the door wide open right now, um, you got to watch it. So just last thing I want to show you here is this average of all the different European models. I got 51 different runs here. This is a table of them. You know, roughly half of them show some trace of snow, but the average of them sits at about an inch maybe even a half an inch on some of them. So what the pattern is identifying here is late next week, there is a chance of something trying to cook across the area. Does it materialize? That's what we have to iron out here. And of course, I'm going to use all my tools to, to scope that out for you looking across the area, folks. And if you're new to this channel, you appreciate the no-nonsense approach to weather. Go ahead and like this video, subscribe. Let me know where you're watching from. And turn on notifications. As soon as I have a new model that comes in that could tell me Anyway, uh, I'm going to let you know. I call it like I see it when I see it. You know, when we're looking deeper out into the, the future here, you know, the models get excited. I'd rather tell you about something and just keep you posted along the way than kind of keep it from you. But you got to be responsible with how you, how I display that and one, how you receive it, right? Because uh, there have been some blockbuster snows shown on some of our computer models. They're fun to look at, but do they actually materialize? Today's run shows, hey, there could be a chance late next week, but there's not anything to really hang your hat on. But we're still seven, eight days out. Could that change? Absolutely. And does something else materialize thereafter? Absolutely. So my commitment to you, as always, is to keep you posted. Please stay tuned, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.